Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the video on this Python package called Y-Finance that allows us to download market information related to stocks, ETFs, or the broader market directly from Yahoo Finance. And for our company of choice, we had picked Microsoft to look at, for which we printed out some general information that was returned to us as a dictionary. We also looked at Microsoft's dividend history that was returned to us as a data frame, and for that we could use a date time package in Python to sample over yearly dividends and sum them to return to us the cumulative dividend for that year. And we saw in that plot some really interesting information where Microsoft had issued a special dividend in 2004 that was much in excess of its historical average and that it was also very consistent at increasing its dividend year over year. So in this video I wanted to go ahead and look at some other features of this Python package called Y Finance. But before we get to that, I wanted to point out some of the limitations of this package, and that is that not all of the functions actually work properly. So I'm going to start actually by commenting out some of this older code so it is a little bit easier for us to read the terminal. And if I wanted to go ahead and type in print msft.cashflow, I find that it actually returns an empty data frame. And this is also true for the financials as well as the balance sheet. This is a shame because this information would actually be really useful to us. However, what does work very well is the historical data of Microsoft that allows us to visualize the opening and closing price of the stock as a function of some period that we've specified. So if we were to go ahead and print this out, we can visualize what that looks like. So here we can see that on March 13th of 1986, what the opening price of Microsoft shares were, the high and the low, as well as the closing price and the volumes traded. And this goes all the way to when this code was run, which was on January 4th of 2021. Now we can go ahead and do our usual trick where we try to find out what type of variable this actually is and we find that this is returned to us again as a data frame. Which means we are able to use the entire arsenal of the pandas package to analyze and manipulate the historical stock data. We can start by storing the output of msf.history in a data frame called df and we can try to visualize this information using a plot. So this now will display all of the information uh, for the maximum time period that this stock has existed. So we see that the stock data information dates back to about the 1970s for Microsoft and that the stock price has recently shot up to above $200 per share. Now we can get a little bit more specific by typing in a date period that is of a little bit more relevance to us than the maximum period. So the inputs you can put in here could be one month, three month, five days, one day, five years, or max. What we can also do is give it a specific start date and an end date. And this will plot the information on those dates specifically. We can also do open. Or the price highs for the days. Another thing we can do is that not only are we able to access stock information, but we can also look at ETFs and also the broader market indexes. And to do that, I'm going to come up here and make a small generalization. I'm going to call this a security and change this to VOO, which stands for the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. And I'm going to come down here and again replace this with security and I'm going to look at only the closing price.
there we go. That's the price of VOO as a function of time, which is an ETF, not a stock. And we can also look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is DJIA. Again, we can see that around 2009, there was a steep decline which corresponded to the financial recession, as well as the 2020 crash due to the pandemic. Let's say now you want to look at the price of the stock or the market on a historical basis up until today. Today being whatever the current date is. There's actually a simple, neat way to do that and we can use the date time package for, for achieving that purpose. So we could do today is equal to datetime.now which fetches the current date and time and from that we can convert it into a string of the same format that the Y Finance package takes. So we can replace this part of the string with today and this will plot data all the way from whatever start date you input to whatever the current date is. So we can look at what this plot looks like and we will do this again for VOO and there we go. We find that the latest date is now in 2021. So far we've pulled data for each individual stock and plotted them. And now the reasonable question to ask is, what if we want to compare multiple securities, uh, which could be ETFs or stocks at the same time? Now there's a simple way we can do that. Uh, and I'm going to start by actually commenting out this part of code, coming down here and typing securities equal to a bunch of different things that I want to compare, where there is one ETF, S&P 500 index, as well as several different stocks. We now have to declare a empty data frame because the way we are going to extract out information about each one of these securities is in a for loop. So we can do df is equal to pd dot data frame and this creates an empty data frame we can come down here and then type in and make our for loop which is going to be security in securities df security and yf dot ticker security dot history and notice how we are only looking at the closing price and then all we have to do is just print out the entire data frame and and that should give us a comparison of all these different items in our list and there we go Notice I didn't put a legend, so it's a little bit difficult to see what, what line corresponds to what item in our list, but you get the general idea. By using a for loop, we can either extract out the closing price of multiple different ETFs or the open price highs, what have you. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like and or subscribing because it would really help out the channel going forward. Thank you and see you all in the next video.